likewise from birth and death to nirvana and also from afflictions to body. Here, varying beings means to take sentient beings across, to take across one across one sentient being, two sentient beings or three or five does not qualify as taking sentient beings across. The term refers to resolving or teaching and transforming all the twelve categories of sentient beings, thus quickly leading them to Buddhahood that qualifies as taking being across. The third, uprooting suffering. This sutra aims at putting an end to being sufferings. The fourth, repaying kindness, is to reciprocate the kindness of one's parents. Filial piety, devouring beings, uprooting suffering, and repaying kindness, these eight words make up the aim and purpose of the Eighth Star Sutra. It would be too much for us to go into detail. I went over the important points so you would get the gist of it. At the mention of the practice of filial piety, the thought, I've got to get home to be filial to my parents, popped into some people's minds. Once they get home and see their parents, they may forget all about it. While here, they meant to be filial to their parents, but once back home, they forgot all about filiality. Why? It is because they did not truly understand the meaning of being filial to their parents. True filiality is in investigating the Buddha drama. You are being filial to your parents while investigating the Buddha drama here, not necessarily waiting to be filial after you get home, in which case you only forget all about filiality anyway. By investigating the Buddha drama here and becoming the best person in the world, you will benefit the world. Benefiting the world is being filial to your parents. Therefore, filiality can be classified into four types, lesser, greater, abiding, and recent. What is lesser filiality? It refers to filiality in one's family toward one's own parents. It falls short of extending the filiality for one's elders to others' elders, of achieving vast and great filiality. What is vast and great filiality? It is the greater filiality that it attends to all under the sky, considering everyone's parents as one's own parents. That is extending filiality for one's elders to others' elders. Its scope is expansive and not narrow. Yet this greater filiality falls short of being true filiality. What is true filiality? True filiality is when you become a Buddha. It is beyond the scope of the four types of filiality. It is genuine and true filiality. Take the example of Shakyamuni Buddha. Although his father forbade him from venturing forth into monastic life and locked him up in the palace, yet he stole away to cultivate the path as a monastic. After six years of hardship, on Snow Mountain, he sat under the Bodhi tree and, upon seeing the shining bright stars in the night sky, became enlightened to the path and attained Buddhahood. That is true filiality. Thereafter, he became a Buddha. He later ascended to the celestial palace to instruct on the drama for his mother. Wouldn't you agree that that is true filiality? What is recent filiality? It is to pattern one's filiality on later day role models. Abiding filiality, emulated for all time. Recent filiality, emulated in the present. Recent filiality is comparable to lesser filiality with some exceptions. Abiding filiality, for example, is found in China's 24 paragons of filiality. They are models for all times. The august virtue they exemplified and used through all ages. The story of Dong Yong, one of China's 24 paragons of fidelity, was Dong Yong, also known as Dong An, a very fidel person. 
One of his neighbors, Wang Qi, was the richest man, while he himself was the poorest. Dong'an's mom, because of her son's filial devotion, was well nourished and plump. Though advanced in years, she felt happy day and night. On the other hand, Wang Qi's mom was made of money and ate only the finest delicacies, poultry, seafood, assorted meats, but she was thin, was thin as a rail. She was unhappy and worried all the time. One day, when both sons were away, the skinny mom inquired of the plump mom, Your family lives hand to mouth and can't put anything nice on the dinner table, yet you are all trappy and round. How is it that you get so plumpish in your old age? Dongan's mom said to the skinny mom, My son is very filial. He stays out of trouble, behaves himself, and works hard at his job. I've got absolutely no worries, and I'm very happy. As the saying goes, when the heart is carefree, the body plumps out. I'm happy at heart, so I plump out. She went on to ask the skinny mom, You live the good life and there are plenty of nice things to eat in your house. Yet, why are you all skin and bones? Is there something wrong with you? The skinny mom replied, Sure, I've got money and eat well, except my son is a rough neck. He gets a trouble. He gets in trouble in the law day in and day out. He's either wanted by the police for questioning or there'd be some warrants to appear in court. I worry about him all the time. No matter how well I eat, I don't feel happy. I'm stressed out. I get skinnier by the day because there's no way I can put on weight when I'm all worried. Why the two moms, one skinny, one trappy, were chatting up a storm about their sons, one filial, one disobedient, obedient. The disobedient one returned and overheard their conversation. After the moms had said their goodbyes and went home, Wang Chi went to Dong An's house and wrapped up the trappy mom good. Your blubber mouth, why did you feed my mom all that crap? He yelled. When Dong An came home and saw his mom upset, he asked why. She told her son, Wang Ji was here and beat me up. He accused me of speaking ill of him to his mom. Dong An did not say anything to that, but simply comforted his mom. Please don't be mad. That's just how he is. Don't mind him. However, after his mom got beat up and calmed down by that hooligan, she got sick and died. Upon his mom's death, his mom's death, the one blew his top. When my mom was alive, I shied away, I shied away from fights with you to keep her from worrying. Now you've done her in. So he picked up a knife and killed Wang Chi. The skinny mom had always worried that her son might get himself killed one day, and sure enough, he got killed. Afterwards, with Wang Chi's head in hand, Dong An went to his mom's grave and set the head on an altar table. He lit incense, bowed, and said, Mom, please don't be mad anymore. So he beat you up, right? Now I have avenged you. I killed him to offer his head to you. When he finished with the rite of offerings, guess what happened next? He took the head with him and turned himself in, confessing. My mom died after the beating, so I killed him and made offering of his head to my mom. Do what you will with me. I accept the court's verdict and won't dodge the law. The county prefect handed down a life sentence and he was put in jail. It just so happened that the emperor then issued an imperial pardon which exempted all criminals of their past crimes and he was freed. After his release, he was later appointed to high offices in the government. That was the story of Dong Yang, a filial son. Though there are abiding filiality, recent filiality, greater filiality, and lesser filiality, 
True fidelity is cultivating the path and accomplishing Buddhahood in the future. As right now, you are investigating the Buddha drama without having to return to your homes. That is true fidelity. To truly be able to investigate the Buddha drama and to be able to practice and uphold the Buddha drama is to be truly filial to your parents. An explanation of the title. For the an explanation of the title, xiao as in to extinguish. What does the word xiao mean? It means to explain clearly the meaning of the text. Therefore, an explanation of the title of the sutra, sutra of the past vows of earth store, shitika ba bodhisattva. The sutra incorporates earth store bodhisattva's name in its title, which refers to a person, and past vows denotes drama. Therefore, in the seven categories of sutra titles, this sutra belongs to the category of titles consisting of person and drama. Drama is just a kind of karma. Past vows refers to his fundamental activity karma, deeds and karma created in his past lives. Why the name Earth Store? Earth nurtures the growth of all things, and store refers to treasure troves. All the treasure troves are in the ground. Store can also mean to keep hidden, i.e., to keep from view. All the treasure troves are hidden from view underground. The earth can grow the mara things. It can also keep the mara things hidden, buried underground. Like the great earth, this bodhisattva is able to make the mara things grow. Like the great earth, he has endless, boundless treasure troves in the ground for people to uncover. Those who believe in this bodhisattva are, imit- are entitled to the treasures within. Anything you can think of can be found in these treasure troves, and there is something to suit everyone's fancy. All the precious diamonds, gold, silver, lapis lazuli, crystal, mother of pearl, to name a few. If, say, you come into possession of a big 300-pound diamond, that should make you the world's richest person. I made some people laugh when I said 300 pound. They thought that was way too big. In fact, that is still way too small, the smallest of all, because the one that is way too big is practically too heavy for you to even pick up. This bodhisattva is replete with all these gracious virtues, thus the name Earth Store. The word Bodhisattva in Sanskrit translated into Chinese means an enlightened sentient being, sentient being, an enlightened one among sentient beings. It can also be translated to enlightened beings, leading others to enlightenment with the principles that oneself has become enlightened to. In other words, it is the enlightened one enlightening others. Oneself has become enlightened and wishes for all sentient beings to become enlightened.